So for our first example in section 11.2, we're going to look at a Wilcoxon signed rank test. So again, this is a non-parametric test. It's the, not the most valid of tests because it can use smaller data sets. It could also not have to be normally distributed. So, but it will serve its purpose if we needed to know some information about a smaller sample. All right, so this problem is a quality control inspector wants to test the claim that a spray on water repellent is effective. To test this claim, he selects 12 pieces of fabric, sprays water on each, and measures the amount of water repelled in milliliters. He then applies the water repellent and repeats the experiment. The results are shown in the table below. At alpha is equal to 0 0.01, can he conclude that the water repellent is effective? So for it to be effective, that must mean there is a difference. So in my null and my alternative hypothesis, you can see I already have these written out. My null hypothesis is going to state that there is no difference in the amount of water repelled. All right, mathematically, what that would mean is that they would be equal to each other. The alternative hypothesis is going to state that there is a difference. Now, that's what we're testing here. So you can see that's where I put my claim. So if there is a difference mathematically that's not equal. Now from previous hypothesis tests you'll remember that an equals not equals will give us a two-tailed test. So we have to figure out what our rejection region is. So we're going to use an alpha of 0 0.01. Now for our table we need to know what our sample size is. So I take a look at my table very quickly and I need to understand how many data sets I have. Remembering from section 11 that if my data doesn't change, then I omit it from my data set. So I go down quickly and I see right here, these sixes result in a difference of zero. So I'm gonna omit that from my data set. All of my other pieces change in some way, some of them negatively, some of them positively. So some of them change in some way. So I'm gonna exclude that set of sixes. So that's gonna give me a sample size of 11 rather than 12. So now I'm going to my table. And in my table, I'm looking at a two-tailed test. I'm looking at alpha is equal to 0.01 with a sample size of 11. So when I use that table, I'm crossing over here to find that five. The rules of this table say reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is less than or equal to the given value. So we're going to reject if my signed rank sums are less than or equal to five. All right, so now, we have to figure out what our test statistic is. So I set up a table for us to use. We're looking at ranking the differences of our before and after using the repellent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the differences. So this has a difference of negative 7. This has a difference of negative 5, negative 4, negative two, positive two, one, negative one, negative three, positive three, negative six, and negative four. Now, to rank these, I'm not worried about the difference being positive or negative at first. So I'm gonna take the absolute value of all of these rankings to actually rank it one through 12. Okay, so now when I rank it, I want to rank it in first place through 12th place, except there are going to be a few exceptions because some of these differences are going to be the same. So like I said before, we're kind of going to admit that these sixes even exist. So that means that I'm not going to have a ranking up to 12. I'm going to have a ranking up to 11. So now I'm going to rank in first place my two smallest values, which would be ones. Now here's the tricky part. I can't rank them both with one and one because it would seem that I would then go to second place. 
these have to share first and second place. So to find these rankings, I'm going to add the first place and second place together and average those out and divide that by 2. If I were to have three ones, I would do 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3. All right, so this is going to give me a ranking of 1 and a half, 1 and a half. So that's just showing you that they're sharing the rankings for that. So now I'm looking at third place. So I look down my list and I see that I have two twos. So I'm going to do the same thing. That's going to make my third place and my fourth place, but I'm going to have to divide that by two. So that's going to give me a ranking of three and a half. So there, these twos are sharing third and fourth place. Now I'm looking for fifth place. So I've used this, I've used, I've used, I've used. My next value is three. And again, I have two of those. So I'm going to share those with fifth and sixth place. So five plus six divided by two is going to give me a ranking of five and a half for both of those. Again, I have two fours, so I'm going to repeat that process with seventh and eighth place divided by two is going to give me a ranking of seven and a half and seven and a half, so that's seventh place and eighth place. Now you can see I only have one five, so the number five gets ninth place all to itself. I have one six. That gets a ranking of 10 all to itself. And my last ranking has the absolute value of seven. So that's my 11th place. All right, now I do need to know whether it was a positive change <clears throat> or a negative change. So I'm gonna take these rankings and add these signs back to them. So this is gonna have negative 11, negative nine, negative seven and a half, negative three and a half. This is going to have a positive three and a half, positive one and a half, negative one and a half, negative 5.5, positive 5.5, negative 10, and negative 7.5. Now we have to calculate our sums of these values. So what you're gonna do is take the sum of all of your positive values and add those together. And you're gonna take the sum of all of your negative values. So real quick here, just so I don't mess anything up, here's my negative values. And I'm gonna add those together first. So really it doesn't matter at this point if they're negative or positive, I just gotta to remember to add all of the negatives. So I'm gonna do that quickly. 11 plus 9 plus 7 and a half plus 3 and a half plus 1 and a half plus 5 and a half plus 10 plus 7 and a half gives me a total of my negatives as 55.5. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add up my positives, which are 3 and a half, 1 and a half, and 5 and a half. And my positives give me a change of 10.5. Now what I need is for my test statistic, my W sub S, my test statistic is always going to be the smaller of these two values. Whichever one is smaller. So that positive sum of 10.5 is smaller. That's going to give me my test statistic. So my test statistic ends up being 10 and a half, which you can see is too large to reject. So in step six, we're going to fail to reject this to reject our null hypothesis. Therefore, there is not enough evidence at the 1% level to conclude that there is a difference in the amount of water repelled.